Merry New Year and Merry Christmas. Why am I saying Merry Christmas? Because we've just got the greatest gift of all. And what is that? Life after lockup is back, baby. Let's get right into it. <laughs> so this season, it seems like the cast got a little upgrade. The main cast. I think that Shane Lacey and uh, Cheryl and Josh, like the new couples, I don't think they got the same check that Megan, Michael, Sarah, uh, who else is coming? Clinton, Tracy, girl. <laughs> the OGs, you know what I mean? Brittany and Marcelino. I don't think they got the same check that they got, but you can tell that this cast has received some coinage. You know what I mean? Like they all look considerably different in their confessionals for the better. Like they, everybody looks great in their confessionals. And you know what, guys? I'm not mad at that. If this show gave this cast more money, they should. They deserve it. This show, in my opinion, has single-handedly saved Wii TV. Guys, people weren't really checking for Wii TV like that. Like it wasn't, their shows weren't really trending aside from the Braxton's, but that was only trending with a certain market, <laughs> the black market. Okay. The Braxton's do have diverse viewership, but I don't think they have such a diverse viewership in numbers as Life After Lockup. Not even Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup. And it's because of this cast. This cast is really, really good. So if they got more money this season, they deserve it. And I congratulate them for it because they know how to put on a show. We didn't get any Clint and Tracy this episode, and I was really disappointed because let's be real, that's one of the main couples we're looking forward to. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they have the biggest, like, you know, transition from last season. You know, like, there are major differences within this couple, especially from what we've seen in the trailer and I guess, you know, in some of those blogs. Like, they have a lot going on, and we all want to know about it, so I was disappointed that we didn't get them this season. Uh, this episode, but I think that we did not get them this episode because I think this season is going to introduce us to uh, new couples um, that we met in Love After Lockup and, you know, pretty much give us their story, right? And then bring us up to date with the couples that we have fallen in love with, with the last season of Life After Lockup, right? I think they're doing that because Clinton Tracy, in my opinion, from what I've seen, I think they're going to consume this season. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> that's what I want. Give them their own spinoff. They deserve, right? So I think that's probably why we did not get them in this first episode. And I don't think that we will get them in the following episode because there's still more couples that we have to meet again. We have to meet Cheryl and Josh again. And um, we left off Angela and Tony, but I think we're going to get more of them in the next episode as well. If we do get Clinton Tracy, I think we'll just get a little bit of them at the end. And then the third episode is all Clint and Tracy because they have so much real stuff going on. And ah, sad to say, but I cannot wait to watch. So let's talk about Lacey and Shane. Do the Love After Lockup or Life After Lockup producers like force their cast members to like reveal to people that they're felons or, th or that they're dating somebody that's a felon because Lacey and Shane go uh to I think it's a what is it is it is it a fertility doctor I think so I think they went to like a fertility doctor and then Shane is you know all as soon as he like sits down he's just like oh I've been in prison since I was 17 for something that I did and we met online and we started dating and we fell in love and Dr. Sally Jesse Raphael is just sitting there looking at them like oh okay I just want to know about her cycle like why are y'all telling me this but I feel like the producers are encouraging them or making them do it because they do it every time they meet somebody not a part of this cast so i'm just like is this something that they're forcing them to do because it just seems so awkward that poor doctor was sitting there like okay really 22 felon wow tubes tied it's a lot going on here uh lacy and shane have sex five to ten times a day listen we're all sexual beings right i'm not knocking what you do with your genitalia, but I just want to say something to Lacey. Do you ever let your child groom know that you just need a break and to chill for a second while you ice your coochie? Because five to 10 times a day, a week, 
That sounds painful. Speaking of Lizzie, she looks great in her confessionals. She looks really great. I think she stopped doing fillers and lip injections and her face has like come down from like buff Squidward to like normal. You know what I mean? If, when people get like too many fillers and like injections, they start to look like buff Squidward and it just, it just doesn't look right on a human being. But now that she's like removing those things or just stopping it, she looks really great, which is making me think that she's pregnant. Is she, do you guys believe that she's pregnant? Because I'm like, why would Lacey stop putting fillers and injections in her face? Like what would make her stop doing that? The only thing I could think of is that she's pregnant because her and Shane are moving really, really fast. Like they just got married. He obviously has a drinking problem. She's still in love with, uh, what's that? Um, what is that? Her ex with the, with the nice voice. What is this? You, you know what I mean? I don't want to say the meth addict, but you know him, right? who's back in prison for like meth issue. Jesus, this meth is really getting, is really taking out the young people. Oh my gosh, is the 80s back? Lord, in the worst way. So Lacey and Shane are trying to expand their family or plan on expanding their family. So they're moving out of her home and they're moving into a bigger space, which makes me think that this girl is pregnant. Like in the confessionals, I think she's already pregnant because why would you guys do this right away? You just got married. Now you're moving to a bigger home. I think she was probably pregnant while the season was filming. She probably got pregnant on her wedding night, five to 10 times a day, every week. How are you not pregnant right away? So I think she's pregnant because her looking very different in the confessional, stopping all the stuff with her face, and now they're moving right away to a bigger space to make, um, to make room for more children. So they're moving or whatever, and the house is just like not put together, right? So stuff is everywhere. Like Shane is throwing stuff in the truck and Lacey doesn't like how he's doing it and she's not helping. Lacey's pregnant, guys. Lacey is pregnant. Because at first I was upset with her because I was just like, how are you cussing him out, telling him that he's not doing enough? You know what I mean? Shane is drinking, you know what I mean? Like, I would be annoyed too if we have something important to do, like move our entire home and my man is drinking, especially if I'm pregnant and I can't help, right? So she's upset with him about that. But at the time, I didn't think that she was pregnant. And I'm just like, well, why didn't you pack stuff up? Because these are movers, not packers. If you want packers, that's an entirely different service. So why are you upset that the house isn't put together and being moved the way you want it to be moved when you're just sitting there watching him do everything? Because even Shane was like, well, you're not trying to help me. And she was just like, oh, Shane, whatever. And I was just like, Lacey don't back down from the argument. Like, if Shane would have talked back to her, if she was not pregnant, she would have beat him up and probably stabbed him in his liver. So, you're not trying to fight him for talking back to you? Lacey is pregnant. Lacey is pregnant. And although she's pregnant, that doesn't change the fact that she is still messy. The white Michael, the white Michael, because her and Shane get into it about moving. You know what I mean? Understandable. Everybody fights about moving because nobody likes to do it, right? But are you that pissed off that you would call your ex, who you know still has feelings for you, who you have been abusive to, physically and verbally and mentally, why would you call him because you got into a minor disagreement with your husband? Your hu She's married, guys, at this point. And I'm just like, what would make you that upset from this little disagreement to go and call John because she's still messy? She's still messy. Now she's doing this whole thing, calling her friend who never holds her accountable. So that's the friend that you always call when you're doing something messy and you don't want nobody to judge you. She calls Melinda and Melinda's just like, oh my goodness, is he okay? What's going on? No, a real friend would be like, why are you a married woman calling your ex-boyfriend who still has feelings for you? Why are you doing that? But Melinda never holds her accountable. So now Lacey is acting like she is concerned because John isn't picking up the phone or whatever. And she thinks that... He has like relapsed, which he obviously has because it was all in the papers, the papers, the blogs. So she's concerned about that. Understandable, but you're still married and you're hiding in a shack calling this dude. So you know what's wrong. You know your husband wouldn't approve. Messy, the white Michael. I can't believe we got two Michaels on the same season. Bravo, bravo, Sharp Entertainment, bravo.
Andrea or Andrea? Is this Andrea? Lord, this is Andrea, right? Oh, is it Andrea? Is it Andrea and Lamandre and Andrea and Lamar? Why would they get... <laughs> I don't know what her name is. The black girl from Utah and this felon that she's been having sex with in the closet for like, what, seven years? <laughs> A mess. Anyway... So we cut to um, Andrea, Andrea in Utah with her girlfriends. Her group of friends, so random. I would never think that these people like all hang out because they all seem like they're from different regions and like span and age. <laughs> there was a lady there who I was just like, you have to be 70. You have to, how are you guys hanging out? Utah, you, black people are survivors, guys, because the fact that there is black people, black Mormons surviving in Utah, we can survive anywhere. We gonna survive Trump. I don't know about everybody else, but <laughs> we gonna survive. <laughs> Lord, pray for us. Anybody watching us outside of the US, please pray for us. We need all the prayers we can get, please. Anyway, so she's at a sip and see, and basically it's this thing. It's this thing. You can tell I ain't got no friends who got like babies. <laughs> I'm at the age where my friends' kids are like either 10 or just, you know, <laughs> fly aunties. You know what I mean? If we don't have if you don't have a 10-year-old by now in my group, you just not have a kid. Oh no, one of my girlfriends is pregnant now. So it's weird. I don't know if it's just my generation, but the girls in my generation are, ha are having kids. Like, if you didn't have them in your, like, early 20s, you're not having them again until, like, your mid to late 30s. It's so weird because it's just this generation. My mom, her generation, <laughs> by the time they were 17, they had two kids. This is very different. This is very, very different. Anyway, the sip and see is where you, you introduce your baby to your girlfriends. Like, you know, after you have the child, you, like, they come over and they drink and they do crafts. And it's just like, this is my baby. Is that a Utah thing or is this something that everybody does? I've never been to a sip and see. Sip and see. I've been to a bunch of baby showers, but not a sip and see. Anyway, I think it's a great idea. I might do it. Who knows? <laughs> because I'm going to be like my girlfriend. Geriatric pregnancy. Pray for me. <laughs> so I am all over the place. <laughs> I'm excited. I've missed you guys. So anyway... While, you know, the girls are hanging out and talking, Andrea reveals to them that her youngest daughter is Lamar's. Guys, um, I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't have done this for two reasons. One, Andrea's daughter, right? She reveals to them that Lamar is their father, her, her daughter's father. And the friends are just like, well, how did you get pregnant by him? Because you're, you guys weren't married while he was in jail. And this kid is like seven years old. So how, how did you get pregnant? Because if you're married, you can only have conjugal visits. So the girlfriends are like confused. I'm not confused and I'll tell you why. So she's just like, oh, you know, well, we, we paid, I guess they paid one of the uh, correctional officers you know, prison police, whatever them dudes are, prison security guards, pay one of them to allow them to have sex in a closet. So she was, you know, getting her back blown out in a prison closet by this dude who was like in jail for 20, who was in prison for 20 years. So during one of those, you know, <laughs> closet sessions, she got pregnant and the youngest, her youngest daughter is his, which is why she's, been trying to make this relationship that doesn't seem like it will work work because her youngest is Lamar's uh, daughter. So all her girlfriends are shocked and disappointed and they did not hold back the disappointment, especially her best friend. She was just like, oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have sex with a felon in the closet. It's disgusting. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's your best friend. You just gonna drag her on TV like that? And so here is why I would not have said that if I was on Andrea or Andrea. <laughs> I'm gonna get her name the next episode. I'm gonna get it right. But I'm confused. Anyway, I would not have done that because if I were her child, I would not want to know or have it be known on national TV 
that my parents conceived me in a prison closet. I wouldn't want to know that. And then if I was her oldest children, I wouldn't want to know that my mom was getting her back blown out in a prison closet next to some freaking brooms and Lysol and Mr. Clean Bleach. Like who wants to know that about your mother? You know what I mean? Lie to me. Lie to me. Make me believe that you guys conceived me on your wedding night in the Four Seasons. I'd rather live with that lie than to know that I was conceived in a prison closet. Like this is TV, honey, and we have the internet. This clip is going to last forever. Your daughter is going to know that she was conceived in a prison closet. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to know that. And I just felt like I get that you're on this TV show and you want to make money and you want to become a reality TV star. I, I totally understand that. But I just feel like some stuff you could leave to yourself. Like we didn't need to know that. You know what I mean? Like it was good TV at that moment. But when you think about it, when you think about the effects of it, it just, um, it wasn't necessary. I mean, it's juicy, but for the sake of her children, I don't think that that's something that she should have revealed. Because as we see in the trailer for the next episode, her children, especially her son, is really disappointed. I think her daughter walks off when she finds out that, uh, it's just, that's just really messy to know that your little sister is this man's daughter and you haven't known that for like all of her life and you're finding out on tv it's just in poor taste and very poor taste so, although i was disappointed that um andrea andrea told uh this tea about her child um i wasn't shocked right there are so many ways that people have sex in prison um <laughs> i know of a way from you know somebody in my life where uh you how you <laughs> sex in prison is um and you know what some a lot of you watch me a lot of you who are in like you know love at the lock up relationships watch my channel and y'all all you know let me know the tea as well let me know if you've done this you can inbox me if you don't want to put it you know in the comments but let me know if what i'm talking about is real tea because i know of somebody who is in this situation and what they do is when she goes to visit him, she cuts a hole in her tights and she sits on him and that's how they have sex. Like, but you got to act like nothing is going on. And like, you know, when you are caught, she moves to the side and, you know, she leans up and allows him to, you know, cause I guess, you know, he has the length to insert himself in her that way. But that's like one of the ways you can have, or you can, you know, pay a prison guard to allow you to have sex in the closet. There are so many ways to get around the system. The system will never beat the people, never. <laughs> Brittany and Marcelino, I love this couple. I've loved this couple from the beginning, even though I had my issues with Marcelino and how um, I just felt like he was too, he was too much. I felt like he was smothering Brittany right as she uh, got out of prison. However, I think they have grown and I love where this couple is. You know what I mean? The, watching them in their confessionals, it's so beautiful because you can tell they're not faking it. Like it is real love. They really enjoy each other and they are just having such a good time in this relationship. And I'm so happy for the both of them because there's been so much adversity in their relationship and to see them in this healthy place. I love it. I really, really do love it. I've always loved this couple and I am so happy that they are still in like a good place. They've had the growing pains, but they have been able to weather that storm. They've weathered so many storms and they are in this position. So proud of them and so happy for this couple. I told you that I saw them in Vegas the last time that I went. They're also a very tall couple. They were towering over everybody. I think they're both like six feet or something like that because I was just like when they were walking down the hallway I was just like y'all don't look this tall on TV is everybody in Vegas or in their community tall because Brittany and Marcelino do not look that tall on TV but in person the, guys I'm telling you they were taller than everybody in that freaking casino <laughs> I was like oh my gosh hey. So not only are they in a good place in their relationship, they're in a really good place because they are now expecting another child. Brittany is pregnant again. Is her daughter even one? No, no, she said 15 months apart. So the baby just 
turned one and now they're about to have another child a boy or a girl they do not know and they have giovanni with them full time because tito was out there back in the streets so they have a lot going on but they seem to be handling it really well i mean you know for a couple to have you know a newborn and to be dealing with this custody thing with giovanni and to now you know not a newborn but a one-year-old and now you know you have a child on the way that you did not prepare for because she said that she was on um birth control and she said that there was like they, they they were struggling with the you know calculations it's okay this is real love i don't care they can mess up on the calculations i'm just glad that they are in love and happy but there was like a one percent chance that britney could get pregnant on this birth control and i guess uh, you know marcelino the puerto rican broke through with his sperm and got this girl pregnant again wow that their, their story their story is so amazing <laughs> Oh my God. Angela and Tony. Guys, did you know that Angela was a mental health therapist? For who? Other people? Mama, it can't be. You better be one for yourself and not other people. How in the hell are you helping other people and you in this relationship with Tony? How are you helping me work through my issues when you got your own? What is that? I'm not looking it up. Books and busy, okay? If you are a mental health therapist or knows what it is, like what the job requires, let us just know in the comment section below because... When I saw that, I was like, mental health therapist? You helping somebody work through some mental issues? And you living with a whole mental issue? Girl, no. You're not taking my insurance money. <laughs> I'm not signing up for this. Get some help first. Then you come and start trying to work through people's mental issues. Because I just, there's no way that you are like, you know what? Mental health therapist. I started to think about it and I could be wrong, but I'm like, mental health therapist, Angela, is she one of them chicks that like babysits, um, that like takes care of people who have like uh, mental issues, like mental and physical issues? Because I see a lot of them, <laughs> can I be real? Let's, let's tell the truth from saying the devil. In the hood, in the hood, you see a lot of, you know, in Philly, where I'm from, you see a lot of, you know, black, Puerto Rican, ghetto white girls with, with, pe with people with disabilities. I'm starting to think that maybe that's what Angela does. Now I can see her doing that. I can see her doing that because she does have like a caretaker's heart because I think that's probably the reason why she continues to take care of Tony because that's what she is. She's his caretaker that he continues to cheat on. Like Tony, I don't know if it's a maternal thing, but she is constantly being lied to and cheated on by this man and she continues to take him back and i thought it was just because he was this young thing that will make her feel good but you know a young dude trying to scam you know an older woman for some coins that yeah, dime a dozen you can find them anywhere what makes her continue to go back to this guy i think it's because that's who she is she's a caretaker and she wants to take care of him i don't know if it's maternal i don't know if, if this is just how she's in her community but i think that's a huge reason why she sees someone who has an issue who was wounded and she wants to take care of him and fix him oh no she doesn't have a caretaker's heart she's just a woman she's just a woman we can never leave a person alone if they are beat up and broken and we even with our own issues we try to help people especially men Oh, we got to do better in 2020. Let that broken man go. His mama could fix him. Not you. Not you. And the mama can't even do that. Not your problem, ladies. Not in 2020. Angela, sweetie, how many times have you been cheated on? Because this SIM card, you know, idea that she came up with? Genius. But I'm like, you have to have been cheated on a lot to like get here where it's nothing to you because... She just felt like Tony was cheating on her and she took his phone while he was sleeping and he like has his phone lock on and I guess she doesn't know the code or whatever. So she was like, <laughs> Tony thought he was slick locking his phone, but I got something better for him. I took his SIM card and I put it in my phone and voila, there are all his text messages. I was like, wow, I would have never thought of that. Have I been cheating? I probably just haven't known. Have I been cheated on? Has he cheated on me? Oh, but it was with a guy. He's gay now, so. <laughs> church, church girl. Every dude I dated is gay. <laughs> 
So Angela starts scrolling through Tony's text messages. And while she's scrolling through his text messages, I'm looking at this font. And I'm like, did you enlarge this or is this Tony's font? Because wow, I mean, the font was like Comic Sans size 72. I'm like, who can't see? Is it you or Tony or both? And through Angela's, <laughs> and through Angela's snooping, uh, she discovers that Tony is a pimp <laughs> who's not being paid in cash. He's being paid in coochie. What? This show is amazing. <laughs> For, for prostitutes, is, is that the right term? Sex workers. He's paying for rooms and allowing sex workers to use them. And he's not getting like anything off top. Like he's not getting a cut. He's not getting 10% of our profits. They're just paying him in coochie. <laughs> like... <laughs> Guys. I could have never wrote this. I could have never. Life is the best script you will ever have. I'm telling you. If you want to write a successful script, just sit down and write your life. This right here, who would have ever thought this? Who would have ever wrote something like this? I was just like, wow. You're not even taking the money. <laughs> After Angela does all this snooping, Tony, you know, walks in at the right time and, you know, she confronts him about the cheating, but she has gotten to the point, I guess the producers have been there for a while or whatever, and they've been talking to her because she's like chill now at this point. And she just gotten to this point where it's over. So she like sits down with her cigarette <laughs> and she's just like. Tony, <laughs> it's over. I'm done, Tony. Get your stuff and go. I'm done. I'm done, Tony. I got in your phone last night. I saw the text messages. I'm done, Tony. I'm done. <laughs> All jokes aside, Angela, you're too old. You're too old to be going through this. Like we just, I, we just gotta tell the truth and shame the devil. You are too old to be in this position because she's sitting here arguing with this dude. I saw your hose. I saw the text messages, checked your phone. I took the SIM card and put it in my phone and found your text messages of you cheating on me with your hose. Ma'am, you're 50. 50, you should not be here. You should not be here with this young girl relationship. You should be beyond this at this point, at this age. Let that boy go. Let that boy go. So let's end this review with one of the most interesting couples on this show. Second to Clinton Tracy, Thruples. Second to Clinton Tracy, but Megan, Michael, and Sarah, girl, they gonna give it to us this season. So we... We pick up where the last uh, episode of the last season left off where Michael is on the phone. Like some girl calls and like the producers ask them who, who it and is. And the girl is just like, oh, I just dropped off the kids and now we home and we getting something to eat. And the producer is just like, well, who, who was that? Who was that girl? And he's just like, oh, uh, it's nothing. It's just, you know, a female, a female. Ugh, he's that guy, a female that, you know, just called at the wrong time. <laughs> I bet you that female is a baby mother. I bet you that's another one of Michael's baby's mamas because why is this girl telling him about the kids? I took the kids out to get something to eat and now I got to, I'm bringing the kids back home. The, the way she was talking about the children, in my opinion, was that, was, was in a way where it was their children. And I wouldn't put it past Michael. And I wouldn't put it past him to have, you know, another baby's mama out there. Especially, guys, have you watched any of his lives? Somebody, whoever it is, thank you, post his uh, Instagram lives 
on YouTube and the way y'all women are on that man's lives just being all kind of horny. The things that are being said to him, I'm like, you see him on the show. You see how he treated his wife. You see how he treated the side chick. He treated her accordingly. Like, you know, you treat a side chick like that. But he treated her better than the wife. You know what I mean? And the wife, he just, oh. Listen, I told y'all, Sarah got on my nerves, but she was still the wife. I will always ride with the wife. Anyway, I would not be shocked if that's another baby mother or another wife. Noah Michael, Noah Michael. And since we're here, you know, um, and since I believe we're friends, um, I'm gonna reveal something to you guys. And um, before I reveal, I just need you to make a promise that you're not gonna, you know, throw anything at your TV or throw your laptop or your phone. <laughs> because I'm gonna be honest, it's honesty hour. Michael would have bagged a 19-year-old Nikki. Like, <laughs> I'm watching this, and not at 30. I don't know what is wrong with Megan. Um, not even, we're not even going to throw the virgin thing in there because, mm -mm, not, not at 30. I'm sorry. You, you have lived some life by now where you know what this mess is, right? But 19, I would have fell for that. Like, the way he talks about Megan, it's like hearing that. I can see a very young, naive mind falling for something like that. Like me and Megan, we just like connected. Nobody can break that bond. Like even when we were broken up, it was still something there. Like I can't explain it. A dude talking to you like that, telling you that you got have like a connection and a bond that you just can't break. It's like y'all meant to be together and telling you that he loved you and that he left his girlfriend, all that stuff. A teenage Nikki would have bought. Not would have bought. Listen, I had gay boyfriends, okay? <laughs> and thinking back, looking back, the signs were there. <laughs> My mother was like, I was never concerned about him with you. <laughs> like, you knew the whole time. But I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, yeah, I could see myself being wrapped up in that. Because Michael doesn't have good game, but he has a way of speaking that convinces you that you're the only person in the room. Like you're the only one that matters. Even if he had just left being with another woman, the way like he talks to Megan, I'm just like, I could understand falling for that. Not at 30 though, not at 30. I just, maybe it's because she's very sheltered. Is that what it is? Where is she from? Because she's another one, right? And I'm not saying that she's putting on an accent, but just like with Sarah, when they get with Michael, this like black scent comes out, the both of them. Megan is justified though, but I still feel like she's like this sheltered, you know, privileged chick that for some reason the you know the rough side of the streets for black people is you know enticing to her because in her confessionals and like when she talks to her family and when she talks to like b she talks very different but when she talks to michael so so what about the wife what what you doing with the wife are you still with her i'm like megan what <laughs> are you are you pulling a sarah <laughs> speaking of sarah sarah and michael make beautiful children like their children thankfully got the best of their features like the best of the i don't know genes but the best of their features whatever god did he worked it out and they came out real nice because no shade but the way they look mixing that up those kids could have went a different way they could have went a different way y'all got lucky <laughs> y'all got I don't know about the third and fourth one because knowing this couple, they got two more kids. Michael is definitely convincing Sarah to have more children. It's gonna happen. She's not gonna stop sleeping with him. She probably sleeping with him right now. It's gonna happen. She loves that man. She, but she's 24. I don't know. I just, I, could, I just feel like a dude couldn't spit game to me like that at 20, like seven, like mid 20s. I just feel like I had. Was he gay? <laughs> so let's talk about money. Because everybody looks great in their confessionals. Specifically, Megan and Sarah. Sarah looks great. 
I don't know who's doing her hair, but her hair looks very healthy. My only thing with Sarah is these jet black thick eyelashes. Like if you're going to do the faux lashes, in my opinion, I like the ones. I prefer the ones that just look very natural. Like they elongate, you know, the eye, but they just look very natural. Sarah had these drag queen lashes on. And they were not only in the confessional scenes, but they were also in like her regular scenes. So I'm like, did you, are these, did you get these put on permanently? No, sis, where is she from? Maybe that's the norm where she is. Those at. eyelashes are very Jersey. South Jersey. Megan looks great as well in her confessional. I ain't even gonna hold you. This uh, heart leopard body con dress with no Spanx. <laughs> it's like, uh-uh, Megan. Listen, big girl to big girl. If you wearing <laughs> a body con dress, you need some Spanx. Not even just for the stomach. You know, if you are somebody who you know you got body, Spanx help. Because with like a body con dress, it shows everything and everything moves with it. So you know what I mean? Your hips could be over here, but your stomach could be here and your titties could be over here. So you need Spanx to just keep it together. But anyway, she had on her freakum dress and she was going to meet B. And Michael was just like, oh, you look all good. Where are you going? <laughs> She's like, I'm going to meet B. You want to come? In that mansion. Who talking like that in that mansion? In that, you know, gated neighborhood that she was in? Girl, Megan. You pulling the Sarah. Let's talk about B, who I hope we get more of him this season because B was reading. B was reading in his confessionals. And he also was like taking Michael to test. And Michael didn't like it. He was just like, I'm not here for him. I don't got to prove nothing to him. And he's right. Not saying that you don't have to put in work to like really, you know, show their community that you are serious for them and good for this person. Not saying that you don't have to do that, but Michael specifically doesn't have to do that with Megan because he already has her heart. He had her heart first before he had her body. You know what I mean? So now their bodies and souls and everything have intertwined. He got this girl. So he don't need approval from B. He don't need approval from uh, Megan's daddy. He don't need approval from nobody because he already has Megan. But I love the fact that B was looking out for her and he was asking Michael the right questions and also telling him, I don't trust you because of how you did my friend and she shouldn't trust Why you. is my friend finding out that you had a wife? And Michael was just like, well, no, I told her. B was like, you told her after she found out. And Michael was like, well, yeah, boy, what? And then B was like, I don't want my friend to be with forehead. And I was like, I had to rewind. I said, did he just call Michael forehead? I want more of B, B and Giovanni. I want more of B and Giovanni this season. I hope that we get more of the both of them because listen, I'm, I'm one episode in and I am already getting my life. My friend deserves better than forehead. And he said it with a straight face. <laughs> Let's talk about Sarah. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to talk about this because we really don't know what's the truth, right? We don't know that Michael isn't being a good dad. We only know that from Sarah, who last season, you were doing a lot with them kids to get that man to like wanna be with you. And he even said, he even said that you do stuff with his daughter, now daughters, to manipulate him to be with you. And although I don't believe that he did that, personally don't believe that Michael married Sarah to be with his children, right? I think he just did it. Like he wanted to do it. He told the girl that he was going to do it. Had her head capped up. He just gives me, he's a liar. You know what I mean? So I think that he made her believe that he wanted to be with her. And I think that maybe she was pushing marriage and he was just like, let's do it. You know what I mean? Or it could have been the other way around. Or he could have been telling her he loved her and that he wants to marry her. And so they finally decided to do it on one day when he was feeling down in prison, she came and, you know, made him feel better and they got married. That's what I think happened, right? So although I'm not buying that she made him marry her so that he could be with his children, I do, from what I've seen, just based off what I've seen on the show, thinks that she uses the kids to, you know, manipulate him or like, you know, guilt him into doing certain things. 
which is why this scene with her playing Michael with her daughter bothered me because just like with Andrea or Andrea revealing that her daughter was conceived in a prison closet, I thought that this was in poor taste. I didn't think that we as the viewers needed to see that. It was painting a narrative. Whether you like Michael or not, whether y'all have y'all issues, that's still your child's father. So to play into this idea that he's not there and sometimes you got to play daddy and you're putting on a cap and you're talking to him and you're feeling really, you're, you're talking like him and you know, your daughter is visibly sad and you're keeping up this charade. It was just in poor taste. It was just in poor taste. But if she is doing this to paint a picture of him, that is not true. How maniacal. Like it just... That just left a poor taste in my mouth. I didn't like it. I was just like, ooh, this, this ain't right. Don't do this with your baby. Don't do this with your baby. Bring uh, your stud best friend over and have, shoot some seeds with her. But don't do this with your child. You know what I mean? Because even when the daughter called, she called Michael and he didn't pick up. She called him like several times and she was just like, he never picks up when it's me. I don't believe that. I think that he thought that Sarah was calling him and he didn't feel like it. He didn't want to talk to her. He was probably with Megan or his other baby mama. You know what I mean? He didn't feel like talking to Sarah. That's what I think was going on. But the little girl interpreted as her dad didn't want to talk to her. I think if they set up a time for him to speak with her, that he would have picked up the phone. But he's thinking that Sarah is calling and he's just like, nah, I'm not answering that. Sarah, please, sister season, don't make me defend Michael, King Basora. Please, sis, please stop doing this stuff with your daughter. It don't look good on you. It don't look good on you because the picture you're trying to paint, you're painting it for yourself. What did you guys think of this episode? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I am excited for this season and I cannot wait until next Friday because baby, even a glimpse of Clinton Tracy is good enough for me. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments section below. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you next week for the following episode of Life After Lockup. Guys, it's back. We're here. And I am beyond excited. <laughs> oh, this show is so messy, but so good. See you soon. Bye. Again, if you really want to see me dancing with somebody, don't give up, don't stop now, hey.